This was unexpected. At least somewhat. Since my last Christmas and my 16th birthday, I accumulated quite a bit of money. And... <laughs> I got this with it. This is a 2009 firmware flash to 2010 model. Mac Pro 4.1. It's massive. Now, bear in mind, I can't buy things off the internet um, and have them turn up and expect to know how big these are going to be. Just for comparison here, this is my previous desktop. It's a standard MATX form factor, you know, really boring, bland, PC case, dual optical drives, really cheap. Corsair VS650 PSU Don't have an IO shield for this motherboard because it's a Dell motherboard and Wi-Fi card and only good component in this really is this RX 570 We'll be going in here, but we'll discuss that in a minute So yes, I've taken a mega upgrade now some of you might know that I also own a Mac mini and That Mac mini is absolutely amazing blazing fast still really powerful considering and that's gonna stay at dad's this thing is staying at MAMS. So, I will very briefly show you around, but these are legendary machines. They are massive, really, really well built. On the front, we have two bays for an optical drive. This one has one in it. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, this one doesn't yet. I'll probably put one in there. I've got enough. I don't know if it'll work really well with Mac OS, but we'll see. Massive cheese grater front. That's why they call them this. Power button, which is hilariously tiny for a machine of this size. Two USB 2.0, two Fi OIR, I presume these are 800. On the side is this gorgeous Apple logo that you've just seen before, and there's another one on the other side. On the back, this thing is ridiculously heavy by the way. We have the lock for the case, that lets you unlock it, so you can open it up. We have graphics card. I put a slot blank in here, I put an extra slot blank in here, so yes, I have been in here. This is a HD, Radeon HD 6870 with 2 gigs of VRAM, I'm going to talk about this later. This graphics card up here is the original NVIDIA GeForce GT120 which gives you the boot screen and things. Another blanking plate that actually came with it. We have this massive CPU fan grill that goes through to the CPU and the RAM. Two Ethernet. Audio in and out, FireWire 800, oh, and optical audio, which I'll probably never use, but still, and three USB ports. Other side, as I just said, looks really gorgeous, another big Apple logo, but obviously this side doesn't open. So, let's take a look inside. So, unhook that side panel comes off and reveals my goodness this is a gorgeous design so you've got your optical drives up here this just pulls out I'm not gonna pull it out because I can't do it with one hand but there's your DVD burner you have one two three four hard drive bays this one I'm not gonna pull out because it's a bit finicky but it has a 240 gig Western Digital WD blue SSD in it this which I will pull out it's much easier has a 640 gigabyte hard drive of some description, I can't remember what they said it was, but, you know, you may notice some resemblance to, uh, it's my natural colours Mac Pro, it came with a 640 gig hard drive, I found that interesting, maybe they came with these machines, who knows. Here we have the inside of the graphics card area, and you can see the GT120 at the top, and down here is the Radeon HD 6870, which has it's two six pin power connectors down here is where the real magic is we have four sticks of eight gigabytes each DDR3 registered memory I have 32 gigabytes in this machine which is balling put it that way my Mac mini has 16 and I never ever ever used 16 
<laughs> That's ironic, I just got an order update for this machine on eBay, but it was collection only, so I don't understand. And then in here, you can't really see, I wish I had a light on me, but I don't. This is the CPU heatsink, which is uh, very well ventilated through these fans at the front and the back. This is a 3.46 gigahertz Intel Xeon X5690, the highest end CPU you can put in one of these. The only thing that beats one of these is having two of them, which, you know, five, well, however many years down the line, if it gets cheap enough, I will definitely do that. I'll definitely put two of them in here. Amazing CPU. This thing is loaded to the gills already, and I plan to put way more in it. I have parts coming out of this thing. I have the RX 570 coming out of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this HD 6870 out and give it to Ollie because Ollie needs a uh, decent gaming graphics card ever since. Go look at the fake VIP2 and go look at the Christmas vlog if you don't know. We blew up an HD 6870, a different one, not this one, obviously. Um, so Ollie really needs one of those back since I was stupid and didn't use the right power supply. So, yes. I will be giving this to him, I'll be keeping this GT120 because it has the original boot screen, but the RX 570 that's in this thing, that's going in here, and that's going to be absolutely amazing. I may also see if the Wi-Fi card from this machine goes in here, who knows, it might work, it might not. If it does, that would be absolutely amazing. I might not even need it, I can't really remember whether this has Wi-Fi or not, but if it does, I don't obviously have to worry about it, if it doesn't. I'm sure I can find a... In fact, I know I can find a rather cheap option because I've been looking at that. So, let's put the side panel back on. We'll unlock that. These side panels are really heavy. Now, which way up does this go? Goes that way up. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. In fact, I'm not going to do this one-handed because this costs a lot of money. There we go. Now, I was an idiot. I've just got back from Dad's. And guess what I didn't bring back from Dad's? This HD 6870 has six mini display port connectors. None of my displays have mini display port. I have two adapters, one of which takes these to DVI, one of them takes it to HDMI. They're both at Dad's. So, when I can, I'll be bringing those back, but given that I'm putting the RX 570 in there anyway, and I have all the cables for that, we'll probably just roll with that. As you can see, I've got DVI plugged into the Mac, and this display can't figure out whether it's supposed to be in standby or not, and when it isn't in standby, it's just showing a completely black image. So clearly something really strange is going on. Although, I don't know why it keeps flashing in and out of standby, because my other one wasn't doing that. So maybe something's happening? Maybe we're going to get a signal at some point? I've got no hard drive activity, but that's after having hard drive activity, so the operating system is definitely loaded up, from what I can tell anyway. I don't know what this TV is doing, it doesn't understand. Oh, a bit of hard drive. I don't know, maybe it's adjusting to its resolution or something. When I had it plugged into that Dell monitor that you can't see because I turned all the lights off over there, it just... It was either com like black screen, black screen all the time, or uh, in standby all the time. And the only way I could really get it to do anything was unplug the cable, plug it back in, and it would pop up, but it would still be black. Like that is. I wish I could have caught this on camera, I just turned on voiceover, and it actually worked, and I'm logging in, even though I can't see anything, but hopefully I'll be able to fix the display at least a little bit. <laughs> I won't be able to uh, have any graphics acceleration, I don't think, because the GT120 is an old card. I think it might work with Sierra, Sierra's on here right now, but, um, yeah, this, if, if I can, uh, at least just get a display, this will be amazing. Obviously I won't have multi-monitors or anything yet, because I need to get more adapters from dads and things, and I need to buy another one, and, you know, a load of stuff. But hopefully, I can get in and get this thing at least to display a picture. Because it did just pop up. So let's press function, uh, command F5. Turn on voiceover again. Welcome to voiceover. V. Voiceover on Finder. Yes! Install I'm in! OS Mojave application. Install Mac OS Mojave on the desktop! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't know why. I'm gonna copy that off there. Actually, right. I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put this phone down and see if I can get this display to do anything. Yep, I got exactly what I paid for, as I would like to hope. 
Uh, this is the about this Mac screen. I'm going to turn this up. Mac Pro, early 2009. Processor, 3.46 gigahertz, 6 core Intel Xeon. Yes, it's hilarious. It says gigahertz because this is the Daniel Compact voice. I need to download the right voice. Memory, 32 gigabytes, 1,333 megahertz DDR3. Lovely. You are currently startup disk, main. You are current... Startup disk main. Main is 640 gigabytes. There's a 240 gigabyte SSD in here, but it has Windows on it. I will set Windows to boot up later, actually, because I might be able to get some video out of that. Graphics. NVIDIA GeForce GT 120-512 megabytes. There's that graphics card in there, which is what I'm plugged into, even though it's not working. What it doesn't show here is the HD 6870, but I imagine that's in the system report, and I haven't looked in there yet, so let's have a look. Serial number. C system Serial report. number, you don't need to worry about system report. You press system, it's hardware. Expanded data. Audio. Bluetooth. Uh, camera. Card reader, diagnostics, disk burning, Ethernet cards, fiber channel, firewire, graphic slash displays. Here we go. You, verticals, item list, tick video card, AMD Radeon HD 6XXX, level 1. There it is. The NVIDIA GeForce, NVIDIA yeah, there's two. GeForce G, AMD type, GP bus, C, slot, C. slot 1, PCIe, list the item, video card, slot, bit, bus, slot, slot 3, list the item, horizontal slot text. NVID a horri item in ice slot, slot 1. Horizontal text, AMD Radeon HD 6XXX. Chipset model, AMD Radeon HD 6XXX. It's, it's not very specific. Whoa, that was weird. Just as the card shuts down, you get a flash of something on the screen. I'm currently restarting into Windows. Just because Windows is on here. And I'm wondering if I might get some actual output through Windows, because it's Windows. We'll see. There's the bong. The volume was turned all the way down when I uh, first had this thing, so it didn't give me that. But it is now. No screen yet, though. Oh, I heard a Windows notification sound. So it doesn't look like we're going to get any display, but I can turn on narrator, I think. Hang on. Hang on. Oh. I pressed Windows in you and nothing happened and I'm not quite sure why. I hope I can get this thing out of Windows. Ah. Yes, I can get this thing out of Windows. Narrator. I'm typing with one hand, so it's awful. Narrator dialog. There we go. That okay. was fast. Setting narrator quick start. Keep recycle bin. One of Microsoft Edge. Right. Let's go. Windows. W. N. V. E. R. About Windows dialog. Okay. Button. Oh. <laughs> narrator, you suck. Desktop list. Start. S. Y. S. T. E. System. X. Space. System. F. O. System information. System information. OS name selected. Supports multiple selection. Contains four. Table. Version. OS name. One of 40. Selected. Version. Two of 40. <laughs> this selected. is why narrator is awful. It just doesn't work. You just spend ages. OS name version. Yeah. Tell us what they are. Other OS description. Three of four. OS manufacturer. Restore taskbar pane. Let's try just system. Uh, X. Set, settings window. Search box. Find us. Display. One of 13. Non. See details in Windows security. Device specific. Display. I don't think I pressed the right button. Dis but I do want to know what's in display. Dis night light setting. Windows HD color setting. Scale and layout. Advanced. Change the sub orientation. Landscape. Multiple displays. Detect. Button. Space. Didn't detect another display. Advanced display setting. Graphics settings. Link. Do you have a question? Make Windows better. Hurts. Night. Windows HD color settings. Anyway, you don't need to see this. Check it out, guys. We have video. I swapped the GT120, which is... Well, you probably can't see it because, you know, darkness, but right here. I swapped this out. Uh, that's a Mac Pro flashed card. For an 8400 GS I had lying around, which is obviously awful card never want to use it ever but 
temporarily, while I uh, get my adapters and things together, we have video. Here's the specs. We're going to system report. Application, if hardware, if spatter, left audit, Bluetooth, camera. I think the first interesting thing really here is... Ethernet card, fiddle channel, firewire, graphic slash display. Graphic slash display is... Vertical split, item lit, if AMD with the MHD, 6, XXX. There's the AMD radio on HD 6870, but... Like I said, I can't get any output out of it because I don't have any... Silly adapters. Anyway. There's the GeForce I put in. You can see the memory there, I'm not going to go into it, but it's... Four eight gigabyte sticks of registered thirteen thirty three megahertz DDR three RAM thirty two gigs of the stuff that's ridiculous. NVM Express PCI. And then the PC and then the PCI bus just has. There was an error while gathering PCI device information. That's interesting. I wonder why. in parallels C printers SAS SATA slash SATA Express. And then there you go. You can see. I'm not going to get to read this out, but there's. The 240 gig Western Digital green SSD, oh no, WD blue SSD, and there's the 640 gigabyte, I think that's actually a Western Digital Caviar blue, I can't remember, um, spinning hard drive. So yeah, this is a beast of a system. When I get my RX 570 in here, which is right here, it's a gaming edition, yes. Um, <laughs> when I get that in there with my, uh, I need an adapter for it, I've already talked about that in this video, I believe. But, this system is going to be amazing. Cannot wait. Check this out, guys. Welcome to Matter Main, Volume. You are currently on a volume. Authentication has new window. Authentication has... One. Two. Three monitors. I know you can't really tell because everything's in a weird order. Right, yeah, I've got stuff on that screen. But they're all in the wrong order, so I have to go the wrong way. And then I think I get over here somewhere. Uh, oh, now I'm on the middle screen. Oh, actually, yeah, I think I need to go left from here. Yeah, there we go. Three screens all working. Now, why is this happening? Well, if I can keyboard one-handed. Graphics. AMD R9 XXX 4096 megabytes. That's why. I know it doesn't say what it is, but I've put my RX 570 in here. So I have all three monitors. I need to set them up. I need to uh, come and rearrange them in the settings because obviously they're all in the wrong order and thinks the left hand displays the primary, which is just not right at all. But once I've done that, this is going to work really well. So I will show you what I've done. So as you can see here, the only card I currently have in here is my very gamery aesthetic. Radeon RX 570, and you can see I've plugged a 6-pin into it. Well, you may be thinking this card takes an 8-pin. Yes, it does, and it requires more than 75 watts of power. It requires 150, or, you know, however much an 8-pin can provide. However, the 6-pin power connectors in the Mac Pro can provide that amount of power, because I learned recently that an 8-pin PCI Express connector, the other two pins are just sense and ground. So... Basically, they're just there to tell the card, hey, you can draw more power from me because I provide it. Well, the Mac Pro doesn't necessarily have those pins, but it does provide that power. So I thought, well, it might not work because the card might think it doesn't have enough power, but I'll plug it in anyway and see if it works. Works absolutely fine from what I can tell. So I have some things to do now. I have to... This is the Mac OS X drive, but I don't want Mac OS X on a regular hard drive obviously, I want it on an SSD, so I need to back up the serial keys for the software that's on there, if I can get them out, and hopefully I can. And then, what I'm going to do is the 240GB SSD that's on here, 
Yeah, I know this bracket's a bit broken, but I'll get another one. I'm not surprised, it's weird. Anyway, the SSD, I'm going to install Mac OS X on. Mac OS X. Mac OS on. It's not called Mac OS X anymore. Uh, and wipe Windows off. And I'm going to put Windows on my other SSD, my 120 gigabyte that I'll take out my PC. Which means I also need to back up the Windows product key, because yes, this came with a fully activated copy of Windows. So, I definitely want to keep that, that's worth quite a bit of money. I can't do this one-handed, guys. There we go. So, in bay 3, or I might swap these around, but I'm going to put an SSD in here. Don't have an adapter currently, so that's a bit annoying, but I'll get one of those in the future. And I also have another 500 gig hard drive that can go in bay 4. Um, yeah, I'll put that in there temporarily. I'd like to get... A bigger hard drive for this, like you know, maybe a two terabyte caviar black, or even a one terabyte caviar black that I can store my footage on. But for now, either that 500 gig or the 640 gig will do fine. Forgot to mention another thing, guys, that I can use this graphics card for is this graphics card is metal compatible, which means I can install Mojave, which is obviously something I really want to do. Currently, it's running Sierra, just because that's what randomly I assume they had lying around when they gave this to me, so they put it on here. But yes, so I'm going to set this all back up, and I'm going to download the Magical Jelly Bean Key Finder for both operating systems, and I'm going to really hope that... I know, I know the Windows one will be able to find my Windows key, but I really hope that the free version for the Mac can detect some of the software I have on there, because it is the free version, and I'm not paying 30 quid just to find out those serial keys. Although, then again, that costs a lot less than not having the software, so I may end up doing that in the future. You join me in the middle of installing macOS Mojave, on a computer where the graphics card isn't recognized. I don't know exactly why. I would have thought that the installer might have had the drivers, but clearly not. But it doesn't matter, because I'm a voiceover user, so let's do this. Gonna want disk utility. Now then. There's boot camp. Sorry guys, I accidentally hit the stop button. There's the Western Digital 240GB SSD. We're going to erase it. We're going to call this... Macintosh SSD. Interesting. We can't use APFS. I imagine that's because this computer doesn't support an APFS boot or something? Who knows, but we can convert it later if it's possible anyway. Ah, hang on. Does it, need to be, is it because I need to be on there? Figured it out, guys. I just needed to select... Master, I just need to change master boot record to GUID partition map. I'm going to do APFS. I'm going to erase. And we're going to say goodbye to Windows, because this was the Windows drive, but I have the product key and everything saved, so we'll install it later. Here we go. There we go. So now press done. And close this. Let's go install macOS. I wish I could see this, it'd be kind of nice. Uh. Oh, okay. I've, I've never done this before. Let's try it. I'm not quite sure, but I think I might have done it, guys. It wouldn't let me shut down normally. Popped out a disk tree? Interesting. Does it want me to insert some kind of firmware disk? I 
don't know. Hope not. Hope I just had the mouse button held down. Of course, I can't see anything because I don't have a Mac Flash graphics card installed, and the GT120 that is Mac Flashed, well, its DVI output doesn't necessarily work, and I don't really know why. So, we'll see what this does. I'm going to cut all this out, though, of course, because it's going to take forever. It just turned itself back off and back on, so hopefully that means something good happened. We're probably going to get a bong now, I hope? Please? Yes. And it should be booting from my external, which has the installer on it. Yeah, it is. I originally put the installer on this memory stick, however, that did not work because I can't access the boot menu on this Mac, and you can't set your startup disk as a USB flash drive, but you can set your startup disk as a USB hard drive, so I put this really old 80 gig IDE hard drive in an IDE USB enclosure. Works decently well for this. I've also got Mac OS Sierra and Mountain Lion on here. It's just a test drive for Mac stuff. So I stuck a 10 gig partition on here for the uh, for the installer. And hopefully it's booting up now, but that took forever last time, so I am not going to bore you with doing it. Yep, I believe that firmware update worked, guys. To set up the installation of Mac OS Mojave, click continue. Continue button. You are press agree Press button. continue. Agree. Agree press agree. 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 Install. Install. Back. Scroll right button. Now I have to you choose the disk. Not that. Yep. I want to put it on that Macintosh SSD. There we go. Install. Hopefully this won't take very long because it is an SSD and it's coming off a hard drive so... You know, it's not the slowest thing in the world, but it's not the fastest either, going through USB 2. But still, hopefully this should be pretty fast and I'll see you at the Mojave desktop. Hopefully this will be pretty fast and I'll see you at the Mojave setup screen. Oh my god, that was fast. It's not seven minutes or whatever after I last spoke to you and it's already restarting. I cannot wait to see how performant this is, it's going to be amazing. What I imagine it's done is restarted into a screen that I can't actually see that says that it's installing macOS. So, next time it restarts, I will be with you again. We're restarting! We just went through the Apple logo phase where it says currently installing and it's on a grey screen. You can't actually see it though because of course my graphics card wasn't supported. Hopefully it will be in the operating system. Sierra works with it though so I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it will. Here we go! Command F5! I actually have a screen! Oh my god! I pressed Command F5, I don't know if it's loading or not. This is an SSD, so I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know if this keyboard's working through this USB hub or not. We're up and running! As you can see here, I'm running 10.14.2, which isn't the latest version, it's 10.14.3. But I'll do the software updates when I get connected to the internet later when my Wi-Fi card comes, because I ordered a Wi-Fi card, it hasn't come yet. I did get the adapter for the graphics card though, so I've stuck that in, so that's good. And we have all three monitors up and running, and they all just so happen to be in the right order. The only thing is, this primary display, well it isn't the primary display, I believe the left hand display is currently the primary display, it's all working, obviously I have no internet access, I need to get my programs on here, in one way or another, and yes, we need to do some stuff, so I guess I need to switch over to this Mac Mini, and get some stuff sorted. As you can see, I'm installing Mac Tech on there, because I want my LaTeX, I've got a Safari window open on the other monitor, and the reason I can't really show you this very easily is because my phone is tethered to my Mac. Now you may be thinking, but you've got an Android phone, how do you do that? And it's with a program called Horn... Well, Horrendous is how you're supposed to pronounce it. Basically, you can download it from this website that I'm showing on the screen right now, and it lets you use Android devices and their USB tethering on Mac, something that you can do on Linux and on Windows for ages now. 
uh, horrendous got its name because Endis, N-D-I-S, is the Microsoft uh, networking driver thing, system, whatever, and Mac doesn't natively support it, but this little application, as you can see by the Google screen, hopefully you can see that, I can't extend this cable any further, works really well. 4K mode activated again. Uh, I was using my phone because my GoPro had died and I was honestly too excited to charge it because this thing is awesome. Wi-Fi card arrived today. Um, I have no idea exactly how to put it in, but I'm sure we can figure that out really easily. So, I will do that now. I'm not going to try to film it because the problem with this computer is everything's so big, either everything's so big or so small that I, and I don't have my tripod here, it's a dad's, so I can't really film this because I can't do this one-handed, so I will be back in a second. Finally! That took some persuasion because I didn't really want to take the CPU board out, which I presume is the easiest way to do it. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's now in there with both screws. The third antenna, which I presume is for a triple band wireless adapter or something of that nature, that I lost the little protective thing that goes over the end of that to stop it from shorting. It's actually on the cable but it slid down the back through the front and I have no idea where it is. So I put some masking tape on it, hopefully that'll be fine. I've tucked it out the way as you can maybe see there. So let's grab the door and let's see if this thing boots up. Three, two, one. You may notice the second hard drive spin up there. I did just randomly put in my 500 gig, but I haven't actually done anything with it yet because it's currently formatted as XFS from Linux, so I need to get all my files off and format it. And until I buy a bigger drive, I'd like to get a Western Digital Caviar Black 2 terabyte or something like that. Until I buy that, though, I'll use that as a video editing scratch disk or something to that effect. I don't know what it's doing, guys. Either it's taking abnormally long to start up, or I'm in a boot menu or something. Keyboard has power. Although then again, the keyboard probably always has power because it's plugged into the USB hub over here. This is another SSD I'm going to be putting in. This is a Kingston 120 gigabyte. Currently has a version of Linux on it, but I want to put Windows on it and stick it in this computer. And I don't know where the Linux partition's going to go. To be honest, it, it'll have to go somewhere. Or maybe I'll just use a virtual machine if it's good enough, it's fast enough. We'll have to see. I have no idea. Don't know why this is taking so long. This is take. This is a little bit, a little tiny bit worrying. Huh. <laughs> Turns out was just doing the update that I downloaded. Completely forgot about that. I'm very glad it didn't completely balk my installation, but it didn't. So let's see if we can get on the Wi-Fi now. There's Wi-Fi. And connect to BT Hub 6Q6FH. I really need to create a more inspirational uh, network name and password and things, but you know, whatever. Full signal. Let's open Safari. If I can do things. Safari. There we go. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quickly uh, close this. Let's just go to somewhere in the favorites because trying to control a computer like this is not easy. Let's go to the Apple website. There we go. Yeah. Continue. There we go. Wi Fi on my computer. Cannot wait to make this work. Does Siri work now? Oh god, if I would stop pressing that. Hello. <laughs> Works, but it's on US and it sounds really boring. So I have a load of things to do. Welcome to Sunday. This is probably going to be the final clip of this video. As you can see on my main display, everything you've seen up until this point has been edited and has been edited on this machine. A uh, few really quick updates. You might be able to tell I've put a second optical drive in here which for some reason decide to eject. Interesting. Hang on a sec, is that because when you do this... Ah, it presses the button. That's funny, it doesn't with the top one, I don't think. No, it doesn't with the top one. Obviously you're not supposed to do that. Other than that, I have erased 
the 500 gig hard drive and I'm using it as video storage. I've erased the 640 gig after I've got all my stuff off there and that's just being used for general storage and I've put the Kingston SSD in there that you saw I haven't installed Windows on that yet I was using it as somewhat of a transfer disk because I had to stick it in my HP in order to get some files off of the 500 gig which was formatted as Linux so I had to put it in a Linux machine but I will be doing that very soon I'm gonna wrap this video up now guys this thing is amazing it's gonna get me through some great times on this channel I've got some big plans and I will talk about those in future videos and this is definitely not the end you're probably gonna see more upgrades to this thing you know storage particularly but you know some other things maybe USB 3 cards are an option something like that but when that happens you will see it if you like this video and if you got all the way to the end of this video because it's a pretty long one for me 30 odd minutes, maybe 40 by the time this clip's done, then please leave a like, dislike if you didn't like the video, subscribe if you're new around here and you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you next time. Peace.